Okay, let's make the blank. And <laughs> in the interim, before I turned the camera back on, I did sand this a bit more, so it is now a millimeter. I mean, I just sanded it till I felt better about it. And, uh, yeah, got a bit of, bit of sawdust there. So, first thing I'm going to do is side slip slightly. That's nothing to do with freehand, that's just my particular method. And put the first wire on. And there we go. And I just lock it three times in the middle. Chop off the rabbit ears. Make sure it's nicely centered. Good. Looks good. Then I take my string. And in this method I wrap from the butt up to the first wire. And then four times lightly onto the first onto the blade, I mean, beyond the first wire, then lightly back, and then a little firmer down the tube to here, and take the pliers and open the butt just slightly, and now I start hunting for my mandrel, which is here, and put that in, hold the reed on the side, and put it to that mark, which puts the tip right under the first wire. And then remove a bit of the string. And put my third wire on. Sorry. I have to hold it up a bit higher than usual so that it'll actually be on the screen. three times to lock. Make sure it's in position. Chop the rabbit ears. My ancient kind of... There we go. Then I crimp around the butt and tighten the wires again. Relax, lock. And at this stage I'm going to take all the string off. I just let it roll off like that. And then we put the second wire on. Oops. I forgot to center that, but it should be okay. Make sure I can see the mark. I put the mark between the two wires. And then grab it in the middle. One, two, three. Crimp it. Chop it. And I crimp lightly top and bottom. Go back to the butt, do the sides. Not bad. Not bad at all. And at this point, I will scrape the bark lightly. I put the year on on the wire side. And by wire side, I mean the side where the first wire is knotted. And I put the number of the reed on this side. And I start at one every January. I haven't made that many this year. I have a notebook for the reeds. And I keep track of 
cane sources and any unusual circumstances, such as doing a video demo while making it. Um, actually, I'm going to write the number after I cut the tip, just because I don't want to handle the number too much. And I'm going to I measure from between the first wire. Yeah, it looks like it's in the right spot. Seems like it's not quite in the right spot. Just a little bit high. Okay, I'm back. And I'm cutting it at 29. And you, if you want, you can draw a line to guide you. And I cut using these leather shears. They're just beautiful sharp scissors made by the American Leather Company Tandy. It's not bad. It's a little uh, over trimmed. It's okay. I'm going to just see if I can focus that. Still getting used to this machine. Oh, is that better? So it's decent. A little bit of extra cane there. I when I, I don't know if you can see it, but I no you can't. But there's a little tiny extra bit in the profile there. I'm just going to take that off now, rather than let it dry with that. And then I'll be happier. I mean, you can do this right when you cut it. If you don't like anything about the profile, just deal with it now, and then it, yeah, that looks better. Then it gets to dry more evenly. And I take my nail file and I camp for the corners like that. Not like one, two, maybe three strokes, not more. Always coming from the outside going to the inside. And that's it. I bet it crows. Yeah. Not that. I usually check, but it just kind of looks thin and ready to go. So there you have it. It's not hard. And use all your instincts and training that you've developed using machines. And if you've never done any reed making, then just proceed with uh, common sense. And definitely look at reeds of yours or blanks that you like and assess their shape, looking at them and, and feeling them. And if you have a reed that you love, take it apart and look at it inside and out and feel the taper. For me, it's always far less obvious once the reed is fully finished. The tapers are also smooth. But feel them and it'll inform your, your instincts and your awareness. And... As I've mentioned earlier, I've made about a thousand reeds in this style, freehand style, and I began using them in concerts and recordings very quickly. My first recording is the Vivaldi Concerto album, and I had that was I used reed 32 and a couple others in the 30s, so that wasn't that many reeds. It's, it's really not hard. You can also use it for contrabassoon or historical bassoons, and that's where I find it tremendously helpful, with, is with the historical bassoons. Every time I get, every time I borrow a different instrument, I have to make a slightly different reed. And if you try your regular reed on it, and it's too flat or too sharp, then that's your starting point, and then you can freehand a slightly larger or smaller, or narrower or wider, or more steeply tapered or less tapered. It's such um, responsive material. It's amazing how little trimming has to be done. So 
jump in there and try. And if you have any questions at all, write to me. Thank you. Bye-bye.